Uh, you may have seen me walk to the back of the church during the, the hymn. <laughs> I turned on the video camera. So we're videotaping sermons. So if you really want to see a, a sermon that you missed, you can ask us how you can look it up. It's on Facebook. And you can go into our website and, and kind of jog over to, to that, uh, um, that particular website if, if that's of interest to you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the life you have given to us and the world in which to, to live it. Lord, we ask for your grace and your help as we, we think through uh, matters in our world that uh, you may give us light and grace and we may grow into the likeness of Jesus Christ. We ask it in his name. Amen. So this year, one of the contenders in the American presidential race, uh, Mitt Romney, is a Mormon. And um, that's never really happened before, so that's kind of of interest. And I, I get a magazine called uh, Christianity Today, which is an American magazine. It's kind of the, the biggest Christian magazine probably maybe in the world, definitely in the States, uh, more of a kind of a, from an evangelical standpoint. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, I think it originally came from the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association perspective, but now it's, it's, a, it's an entity of, its, of itself. And uh, so l lately in that magazine, they're, they're starting to, t they, they talk a lot about the American presidential election. And uh, so the one of the questions is, well, can a, can a Christian vote for a, a, a Mormon president? And that's a good question. Um, maybe it's not one you thought of because you're not American. <laughs> or maybe some of you are, I don't know. So th there was kind of a debate in there and, and uh, some for, some against. But the, the basic consensus was that, um, you know, it's politics and, and it's, if, if someone's a good leader and they could, they could be a good decision maker and lead our country forward, it really doesn't matter that much what they, what they actually believe. Um, and that sort of seemed to be, and, and perhaps even the, the, their, their values and their beliefs probably will inform how they lead. And if it's a strong, you know, if there's strength in those convictions, that may actually bring strength to their leadership. So that's kind of the, the gist of where it was going. I'm not sure I agree with that 100%. <laughs> Still thinking about this. But it, it, you, it's something you could think about. Now, whether or not he is elected, and it, especially if he is elected, uh, it will actually put quite a spotlight on the Mormon movement, uh, also known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So you see Latter-day Saints around, L LDS is the short form, and uh, I may use that a bit today uh, to talk about it. So I thought today it would be helpful to, to talk about it. So that, that was one of the things that they were mentioning in this, this magazine, was like, whatever, whatever happens, whoever we elect, we as Christians really ought to know what it is that Mormons believe, and what really is the difference? And I agree. Now, you may not. You may say, well, really? Who cares? <laughs> Why does it matter to me? Uh, well, and, and to be, to be honest, um, except that there's getting to be a lot of exposure in the media about it, there aren't a lot of Canadians who are Mormons. It's something like 0.5% of the Canadian population. Higher, not that much higher in the States. It's, it's something like 2%. But there are, that means that there are over 6 million uh, Mormons in the United States. <coughs> so, you know, wh why does it matter to, to me or to us? Uh, we, we, we kind of, we're United Church people. We believe in kind of live and let live, right? <laughs> I believe what I believe. You can believe what you believe. We don't really worry about what you believe. I'm believing what I believe, so I don't care. <laughs> um, sort of right. I would say sort of right, because uh, I agree with that. I think there's a way that to get along in our society, we have to live and let live. We have to understand that people, many people disagree with our, our viewpoint, and we disagree with many of their viewpoints. Um, and it, it's touchy to get into a subject like this, because there's a temptation when one starts to say, well, you know, we got it right, they got it wrong, <laughs> which is kind of what I'm going to say. <laughs> that there's a, a big temptation to say, well, then we're better than them. And that's, that's a big problem. Uh, and, and that's been characteristic. Too, way too characteristic within the church. So, so how are you going to do that? You need to be prayerful about this uh, as you study someone else's belief systems and uh, so that you, you and I are respectful of people because they, have, they, they, are, uh, they, they are to be given the, the same dignity we all are. The, the God, they are God's creations and children. And he loves them as much as he loves us. So you know, we're of equal value in the eyes of God. So it's important to be very respectful. But uh, 
Uh, and, and I think that's, that's, we should be respectful, we should be loving, we should be befriend people that, that think differently than we do. However, the other side of the coin is that truth matters. And Jesus says it quite clearly in, in the scriptures. So for instance, he says, you will, you will know the truth. I quote this a lot because I think it's important. <laughs> you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So if you're looking for freedom, like inner freedom and outer freedom, freedom in, in your life and in your world, it's about truth, it's about reality. And Jesus is basically saying, when you get a hold of reality, it brings freedom to you. And elsewhere he says, I actually am the reality. I am the truth and the way and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by me. He just adds that in there. Elsewhere in the Gospel of John, when he's, when he's meeting with the woman at the well, He's telling her about God, and he says, uh, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. So Jesus' teaching is that in order for us to more, more holistically worship the living God, we must do it from our spirits, and we must do it in, in a greater and greater grasp of the truth, so that as we, we get, as we more fully kind of comprehend the truths of God, then we more fittingly and more uh, holistically uh, worship him. So, so there he emphasizes the truth. And uh, also in his, his teaching about the, two great, the, the great commandment, you know, they ask him, what's the great commandment? And he quotes the Old Testament where uh, the great Shema, the, the Jewish saying, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, your soul, and with all your strength. And then he adds another little one into that, doesn't he? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your mind and all your strength. So Jesus calls his followers to being people who are thoughtful and rational and thinkers. And to know, and, and to me that means study, understand what you think and what you believe. Don't just say, oh, my mom told me this, so that must be true. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Uh, and, and really, personally, I kind of have a sense that within the Church of Christ, especially perhaps, well, maybe worldwide, but definitely in North America, uh, there is kind of a vast ignorance of, of, of scripture and theology and to our detriment. So we, we often get, we get sidetracked and we wander off the, off the trail, off the path, because we don't really know what, we're, what we believe and what the scriptures tell us, teach us. The B-I-B-L-E. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that's my kind of apologia, or uh, it's a Greek word apologia, which means from which we get the word apology. It's my apology for talking to you about Mormons and theology today. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not sorry, so it's not that kind of apology. It just means it's, it's a defense, a rationale for, for telling you stuff. <coughs> so besides the, the biblical teachings, my own belief is that the more we know, the more we understand about God and the scriptures and, and so on, that the, 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 the right or true doctrine, if you will, it strengthens our faith. It, it, it supports our faith. And it, it strengthens our spiritual life. Because once you come, become a follower of Jesus Christ, you're a spiritual person. And your spirit is now being informed by the Holy Spirit. And one of the ways the Holy Spirit teaches and strengthens and informs your spiritual life is through truth, as revealed in Scripture. Now that's, that's my take. So it's important that we, we study the truth. Uh, so, so that, it guards our hearts. It guards our hearts. It guards our souls. The other, the other thing here is that when we look at things that other people believe, it helps us to, to kind of contrast, to kind of separate what it is we believe. So, so by looking at something somebody believes that's different than what we do, we get a, we get a contrast. And it helps you, it, it makes it more clear. Okay, let's dive in. <laughs> now, I, I've been studying this, you know, on and off through this week, thinking I would, I would talk about it. And it gets kind of overwhelming. Because the more I learn, the more I learn I don't know. <laughs> like any other subject. And I, I've pretty much come to the decision that if you really want to learn anything about the Mormons, you really, or any other, you need to take a full, full-blown university course for about three years, just on that one subject. <laughs> so, so all we can do is just taste it a little bit, and I, I am going to leave you with uh, other resources. Uh, so let, let's take a look, first of all, the origins of it, which are really curious and interesting. Uh, it starts, Joseph Smith was born in 1805. And along about the time he was about 18, which is uh, 1823, he claims that he started to have these visions. Uh, and in his visions, the angel Moroni appears to him, 
who is apparently the son of the Angel Mormon. Uh, I, I'm probably getting details wrong here because I just I got this whole head full of stuff. <laughs> and uh, so, so Mormon and Mor Moroni are the ones who, who kind of uh, help him to discover some golden um, tablets. So he finds some golden tablets near where he lives, and they're written in uh, an, a kind of a, a, an unknown Egyptian type language that he doesn't know how to translate. But they also show him how to get the, I think it's called the Urim and the Thummim, which are some biblical words. Uh, they're kind of like special lenses or special, special instruments by which he can translate the golden tablets. Now the golden tablets, as he, as he translates them, tell the story, the long lost story, of uh, Hebrews or Israelites who had come from the, from the, the Near East, round about 600 BC, and they had migrated to Central America. Okay, so, so the whole, and so this is the record of what happened there to, with them and to them and, and through them. Some of them were prophets and they wrote, they wrote books like our biblical books. And they tell some of the history from 600 BC to about 480. Are you with me so far? Okay, so you got these special, you know, new kind of books, never been discovered till now. And uh, that, that tell the story, those stories. And in, in the, it, it's kind of puzzling because it sounds like in those stories, before Christ actually is born, uh, he's, he's teaching the people in Central America stuff. And then after he's resurrected in, in Jerusalem, he actually goes over and appears to them in America at some point and teaches them further things, which are recorded in the Book of Mormon. <sighs> okay? So, <laughs> so. Uh, the Mormons believe, they don't really believe that the, the Bible in and of itself is sufficient. The, the theologians have a word they call for our Bible, like, you know, sort of orthodox Protestant theologians say, it's a closed canon, okay? So that's this fancy theological word, which means this is all there is for, of God's, you know, re revelation. He, he reveals himself, himself to us. He teaches us through people. But as far as the inspired, infallible word of God is concerned, it's done. Here it is, you know, Genesis through Revelation. And the cannon just means, doesn't mean like a big gun that shoots. <laughs> it's, a, it's a yardstick or a standard or a measure. And so, so the, the canon of scripture is these 66 books. Uh, and it's closed. So the Mormons don't believe it's closed. They believe it's an open canon. So the Book of Mormon, you can add to it, for instance, the Book of Mormon. But they don't just stop there. There's, there have been other writings and discoveries or revelations given to <laughs> apostles and prophets and leaders in the, in the, in the Mormon church since that time. Which gets really complicated because sometimes they'll say this is an everlasting statement, and then somebody along the little long line will say, "No, no, that's not really true. It's this," <laughs> and they get away with a lot of that kind of stuff. So, for, uh, for instance, is the whole polygamy thing, which you've heard about back in Joseph Smith's day, uh, the early the kind of pioneers of uh, uh, Joseph. Joseph Smith was the originator, and uh, kind of his his immediate successor was Brigham Young. You've heard of Brigham Young, Young University. So Brigham Young led, uh, after Joseph Smith's death, he, he led the, the major portion of, of the Mormon people, the Mormon believers, from the east side of the states to the west side. Uh, and they eventually settled in the Utah area, uh, Salt Lake, and, and kind of uh, founded Salt Lake City. So that's where their central headquarters, of course, is today. Uh, <coughs> so, but, um, so, so those guys, for instance, Brigham Young had about 27 wives. <laughs> and they really believed that was an important thing and a good thing to do. But not anymore. So someone else has made a proclamation to say, you know, to counter that, uh, which is kind of, that's why it's very confusing. So if I say, well, they believe this, somebody might come along and say, oh, no, they don't believe that. <laughs> it's hard to kind of nail down what they actually believe. Um, now, now, all this talk of, of the history of Middle America and the, and the kind of uh, Hebrew presence there and uh, all the stories that are found in the Book of Mormon about that area and era. Uh, the, the Mormons have been digging for a lot of decades now, and they've never found any evidence whatsoever of any of this stuff. And the, um, and the peoples of Central America, the, even the DNA tests show them to be people that came from like East Asia and came around through the Bering Strait and so on. So there's, you know, scientifically, it doesn't hold water, which is in contrast to our Bible, which has a ton of archaeological and sociological foundational strong points. Uh, you know, that, that kind of undergird its, its credibility. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a little mini history. 
Are you confused yet? Yeah, good, good, because I am. So, so I thought, I, I want to find out what do they think about God? I mean, what, what's more basic? If we're going to study what their theology is, what theology actually means, the study of God. Theos is the Greek word for God, logos to study. So let's study God. What, what do they think of God? Well, that's an interesting story. <laughs> and so God, if we say God the Father, they believe God the Father was a, a physical person kind of on another world. And uh, that he became a god by, by kind of following the right to commandments and ordinances, and he became, he became the god in that world. He married this woman who was a goddess, uh, and they had this vast number of children. The first child that they had was Jesus. And the second child that they had was Lucifer. And all the rest of us are the, the subsequent children that we had. So we are all the, you know, but we were just spirits in, the, in that world. So when a person is born in this world, um, what happens is, is, or conceived or born, I'm not sure, I'm not clear on that distinction, uh, a spirit from that world comes and enters that child. Okay? Although they have no memory of their previous life. And so when you go through this life, actually you, can, you have a, a chance to, to you, when, when you die, you, you, you will regain the memories from, from the former life. Um, are you with me on that one? No. <laughs> Well, well, <laughs> well it, it's, it's somehow tied into why they're so interested in, in genealogy and stuff. So uh, I'll try to, well, maybe I, maybe I should explain that some other time <laughs> if I get it. So, so what essentially is there are lots of gods, uh, even our God who, who fathered all of us, uh, he was fathered by someone in another world before him and so on and so on back into infinity. They have no beginning. Now that's kind of, so, so it's very polyistic, it's, or polytheistic is, is, is what, uh, we would, what we would probably say, uh, which is very different from our, our belief, which is monotheistic. In other words, there is but one God. And our God, which wert and art and evermore shall be, as we just sang in Holy, Holy, Holy. That's why we sang that song. <laughs> ah, method in the madness. See, see the Trinity is anathema. It's, it's a horrible mess up to, to the Mormon mind because it, it postulates that there's only one God, but somehow he, he presents himself, or he is, or he exists in three persons, which is a mystery. You notice a lot of people stumble on that mystery, a lot of these groups, <laughs> because once you can't understand things, people freak out and they want to find a, you know, some kind of better explanation. What if God is just so mysterious and so unknowable that he, he reveals himself to this degree and we can't really comprehend him because he's too big? Um, that's my take. So there's lots of gods. So, so kind of that was a very interesting story about the gods. And so th they, they will talk about God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. But they're three distinct people, uh, three gods, really. Uh, and so, but one of the things when you, you go to study this stuff, and you look, say, at the internet on a, a Mormon website, it sounds Christian. On, on, the, on, the, on the leading edge, it's... Uh, it sounds very much similar. You, you, you'd, you'd swear it's what you believe, except for there's just a little something weird in there. And sometimes people have to kind of really get involved in the church and really draw it in before they actually get to know a lot of the background to it and, and what the real theology is. So Jesus, I've already mentioned something about Jesus, so they, they don't really, they, they do believe he was the only perfect one of us children, of, the, of God's spirit children. And so he was therefore able to die for us. So sort of similar to us. However, uh, so, so they don't see him as, you know, the eternal, everlasting, immortal, all-encompassing God. And that is Christian belief. We believe that Jesus is, is the God-man. Orthodox Christian belief is that uh, God became a man in Jesus Christ. So he's both man and both God. Uh, he, he's God and man at the same time, which is another mystery. But Jesus, this is what Jesus is saying in, in the passage that John read. Um, I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. Now, I am was a clear signal to them, a trigger, because in the Old Testament, when God reveals himself to Moses, he says, I am. Uh, you know, I, I am that I am, Yahweh. And that's, that's kind of the Old Testament name for God. And it, that's why it says in our scripture, at this they picked up stones to stone him. Because, he, you see, he was blaspheming. He was making himself to be God. <laughs> So that, that's where our, our roots come from in, uh, in our, our Trinitarian belief. So I'm going to read you actually a little quote from 
the Mormon website, which you will see it sounds kind of right. Now listen. Along with Jesus Christ, we were raised by heavenly parents as spirit children. What this means for us is that our relationship with Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father is a family relationship of the closest kind. Can you see how this might change the way a non-Mormon Christian might think of Jesus? Instead of believing in Jesus and Heavenly Father as one, and they quote, a complicated trinity conglomeration comprised of one supreme being, which they don't like, we have a very close bond with a father and a perfect older brother. So it's similar, right? And it's attractive because it, it really purports to, to uh, bring forward the importance and the necessity of families. So Mormons are really, really big on family life. Uh, but there's something just, and we call Jesus, the, the, the choir song today, they call Jesus a friend and brother, right? Was, it was, was, in, was one of the, the lines of that. So we do call him our brother, but there's more yet. So the only last point I wanted to talk about is sin, uh, it's a pretty big issue, sin and salvation, the cross of Christ. And they have a different take on this. So uh, they sort of believe in, like the, the Orthodox Christian belief is that when, when Adam and Eve sinned, we fell, the human race fell with them. We, uh, you know, we, we got twisted inside. So we, got, we got pretty wrecked, we're pretty messed up. And that only by Christ coming into this world, his, his death for sins, his resurrection from the dead, are we restored. It's, and it's purely by grace, entirely by grace, the free gift of God, not earned, not deserved in any respect. And, that, and we start that way and we continue that way. And the Mormon thinking, yes, there's sin, um, but, and, and Jesus dies for sins, and that, therefore we're forgiven. But basically, we move on by our own strength. We, we have to... We have to accept the, this forgiveness and then do all the right stuff, like get baptized in the temple, usually get married, do, do our, our stint at missionary. You know, they don't have to do that. They have other things that you can do. Uh, but there's lots of things that you have to do. So it's grace plus works. So that's a big difference. I kind of saw, you know, if, where's, I didn't have a glass here. I had a glass here, the two churches. Let's pretend I have a glass here. And I drop the glass. Now the, grass, the glass might get chipped, right? Just one chip come off. And it's pretty easy to, to kind of stick that chip back on and then use the glass. So that would be kind of like Mormonism. So at the fall, there's a little bit of a problem. But Jesus fixed that. And, you know, by the rest of the glass is pretty good anyway. So we can kind of drink out of that. Now, the Christian viewpoint, in my view, is more like we drop the glass and it's shattered. <laughs> and there's, it's irreparable. We cannot put it together again. But God, by his grace, puts us together again. Entirely by his grace and, and through his love. So, uh, you know, it's kind of the, the, the utter corruption of human nature through sin restored by the grace of Jesus Christ. So that's, that's some of the difference. Okay, enough of that torture for you guys. <laughs> A little theology never hurt anybody. And uh, if, if you are one of those few here today who is like, man, that's interesting, <laughs> and you, I'd sure like to learn more, uh, there, are, there are some little uh, kind of uh, papers I, I printed up uh, kind of tra little tracks. They've got Mormonism versus Christianity, and they've got kind of four pages of you know parallel. What do they think of God? What do they think of the Bible? And you know all this, all this, some of the stuff that I said, and a lot more. Uh, so if you're curious, you'd like to know more. There's some at the back and more at the front here. Um, you could pick up and follow through. So it, just today, to me, was just a reminder that what you believe actually matters a lot. What you believe does matter, and it matters a lot. How you vote is up to you. But let's hold fast to the liberty and the truth that are in Jesus Christ. Let's pray.